Good evening, everyone, for Tell Us All English. I'm Sarah Begum in Caracas, Venezuela. We start tonight in Venezuela. Two owners of a major pharmacy chain have been arrested for contributing to shortages as part of the economic war against the nation. According to the government's pharmacologist's executive president, Pedro Angarita, and operations vice president, Augustin Alvarez, are responsible for creating false scarcity. The government has found numerous cases of hoarding and price gouging by unscrupulous businesses. The government of Venezuela continues fighting the economic war. Authorities seized two vehicles full of food in the state Miranda in the center Northern Territory. The government reported that the cars were full of products which were going to be smuggled to neighboring Colombia and were part of the war to create instability in the nation. Regrettably, a man of the people, a worker, a taxi driver that is playing the criminal game. He has already been stopped and we are investigating how this could have happened. A truck in a mechanical workshop, taxis arrive and they go stockpiling in other centers which distribute food throughout the criminal network. Here, trucks are sold over price, which are purchased at regulated prices. The federal police have in, Bra in Brazil have summoned the treasurer of the Governing Workers' Party for questioning over allegations of corruption in Petrobras. Protesters gathered outside the head office of the partly state-owned oil company in Rio de Janeiro. They are opposing to privatizing the country's oil industry. Many supporters of the Workers' Party, or PT, believe foreign oil interests are trying to take advantage of the crisis in Petrobras. In Mexico, the body of popular revolutionary front leader Alejandro Salgado has been found decapitated south of Mexico City. Salgado had been a prominent organizer of protests over the missing 43 Ayotzinapa students. A day before his body was found, his organization accused local state officials of being responsible for his disappearance. The Colombian National Liberation Army, Colombia's second largest guerrilla group, does not expect to reach a peace agreement with the government in the near future, said Nicolas Rodriguez, the leader of Batusta, known as Gabino. Although the ELN thinks there is a long way to go, they are still willing to participate in the peace process and negotiate with the Santos government. However, they are not convinced the government is really ready to negotiate. Prosecutors in Argentina question a former intelligence chief over the mysterious death of Alberto Nisman. This comes after President Cristina Fernandez lifted the restrictions which prevented Jaime Estuso from giving evidence. For more, we go to Leo Pobleta in Buenos Aires. Yes, after the meeting of the Congress Bicameral Intelligence Oversight Committee on Thursday morning, the Director of the Secretariat of Intelligence, Oscar Parrilli, said that uh, President uh, Cristina Fernandez ordered that ex-Intelligence Secretariat Operations Chief Antonio Stiuso, also known as Jaime Stiuso, will no longer be obliged to keep confidentiality of his actions from 1972 till January to, uh, 2015. It's a period that includes, obviously, the last civic military dictatorship in Argentina. And as prosecutor Viviana Fein awaits to hear testimony from the former agent in the investigation of prosecutor Alberto Nisman's death. It must be said that Stiuso was the chief operating officer of the uh, Secretariat of Intelligence until last December. He was dismissed from office one day after Oscar Parrilli and his deputy were sworn in as the maximum authorities of the organ of intelligence. Mr Barrilli said that this decision proves that the government has a vocation of collaborating in every way possible in the Nisman death investigation. Barrilli also rejected uh, criticism from the opposition about why the intelligence uh, reform takes place uh, towards the end of Cristina Fernandez's mandate, saying that the uh, political process that governs this country doesn't end here and now because there is still nine months left in this government and he predicted another four-year term as well. It must be said that vast sectors of society in Argentina do praise the head of state's great courage to change the political leadership of the Secretariat of Intelligence. I'm Leo Politico Luti reporting from Buenos Aires for Telesur. Thanks, Leo. The leaders of France and Germany are travelling to Kiev and Moscow in a diplomatic effort to defuse the conflict in Ukraine. In a surprise visit, Francois Hollande and Angela Merkel presented their proposals to President Petro Poroshenko in Kiev. 
They'll be taking the peace initiative to the Russian President Vladimir Putin in Moscow on Friday. Both France and Germany oppose US plans to deliver arms to the Ukrainian government. Hours earlier, the US Secretary of State John Kerry also arrived in Kiev to meet the government. The Ukrainian Prime Minister Arseniy Yatsenyuk expressed his doubts about any peace initiative. While Kerry denounced Russia's alleged role in the conflict and refused to rule out giving weapons to Kiev. Uh, we, we talked about the largest threat that Ukraine faces today, and that is Russia's continued aggression in the East. So for that reason, the president is reviewing all of his options. Among those options, obviously, is the possibility of providing defensive defensive uh, assistance to uh, Ukraine. And uh, those discussions are going on. The president will make his decision, I'm confident, uh, soon, but not before he's had a chance to hear back from uh, myself, from others who are having conversations uh, in Europe at this time, the meetings at the Munich uh, conference. In the United States, the debate over the Guantanamo Bay prison continues. For an update, we go to Alexandra Hall in Washington. A group of Republican lawmakers has proposed legislation that would effectively ban the transfer of detainees from Guantanamo Bay Prison for the next two years. At a hearing on Thursday, one Obama administration official told the Senate Armed Services Committee that closing Guantanamo is a national security imperative and that its existence only incites further attacks. Uh, in protest, one Republican senator from Arkansas said that the only problem with Guanta Guantanamo is that there are too many empty beds there. Currently. 122 detainees, detainees are being held at Guantanamo. 45 have already been cleared for release. Uh, about uh, a dozen protesters were also present at the hearing today. Uh, two were arrested when they spoke out, uh, calling the hearing disgraceful and saying it was full of lies. Reporting in Washington, I'm Alexandra Hall for Telesur. Greek Prime Minister Alexis Tsipras says it is time for both Greece and Europe to turn the page on austerity, telling members of his Syriza party that fear is over. The European Central Bank said it would no longer accept Greek government bonds as collateral for loans, effectively shutting off a key channel of financing for Greek banks. But Tsipras insisted that his government would not back down from its electoral pledge to renegotiate Greece's huge EU IMF bailout. The citizens of this country, with their brave choice, have turned the page. They found their way. There is no way we're going back to the hard years. And this choice, I assure you, is very important. It's a serious and substantial choice for all the nations of Europe. Thousands of people gathered in front of the Greek parliament in Athens in support of the new government's efforts to renegotiate Greece's international loans and end austerity. The protest was called following the decision by the European Central Bank late Wednesday to cut off a vital source of funds for Greece's banks. Germany strongly opposes to Greece's move to renegotiate its debt and German Finance Minister Wolfgang Schäuble said he was skeptical about many of Greece's proposals. However, Greek Finance Minister Yanis Varoufakis said Germany should see Greece as part of a larger European program. What we are suggesting to our European partners is, you may not like the fact that we were elected because we're a left-wing party, but use us in the context of a European project for turning a page in Greece and turning a page in Europe. In Syria, U.S. Ali-backed extremists launched about 50 rocket shells on Damascus this Thursday morning, killing at least 10 civilians, including five children, wounding more than 50, and causing damages to various homes. The extremist group called Islam Army claimed responsibility for the attack that targeted several areas in Damascus with mortar and Katyusha shells. The Syrian armed forces immediately responded with airstrikes against the militia. We were abruptly awoken due to the sounds of explosions. When we went to see what had happened, we realized our automobiles were seriously damaged. 
This horrible terrorist assault will not prevent us from going on with our lives as usual. Most of the damage caused by the extremists was reported in civilian areas and vehicles. The surprise attack occurred during rush hour, as people and children were headed toward their work and schools. After I sent my child to school, our apartment was strongly shaken, so I ran to turn off the power supply to prevent a fire from breaking out in my home. At that point, I confirmed that the rocket hit us. I thank God there was no one in room at the time. The Syrian Health Ministry confirmed five civilians were killed and more than 50 were injured in the attack. They added the people injured were rushed to the hospitals. Nishwan Abdullah, Terisur, Damascus, Syria. Moving to the United Kingdom, protesters gathered outside the Oxford University Union to protest against far-right French politician Marine Le Pen. Protesters could be heard shouting various chants, including, quote, Oxford Union, shame on you, unquote, and, quote, Oxford Union, hear us shout, stop the meeting, fascists out, unquote. Protesters also attempted to prevent people entering. In Palestine, there is a chronic shortage of medical equipment. We turn to Nur Halazin for this report. In Gaza, hundreds of kidney disease patients are in danger of dying due to a serious shortage of medicines and dialysis equipment. The Ministry of Health reported that again there is a severe lack of medical supplies. The current situation in the hospitals and healthcare clinics is worse than ever. We are suffering from all sides and sectors. We are suffering the lack of fuel, medical and medical equipment. We hope that the international community or the Arab countries will answer our call and help by either sending aid or pressuring the Egyptian government into opening the border. The Ministry of Health explained that more than 850 patients in the Palestinian enclave suffer from kidney failure and need three dialysis sessions weekly. Kidney disease patient Ahmed told Tilisur he was disappointed with the Egyptian shutdown of border crossings. He also expressed sadness with the lack of interest demonstrated by the international community in the face of the dire situation in the Israeli besieged Palestinian territories. I don't know what to say, how to explain my disappointment and anger over this issue. Look around you, you will see all these men women, even children on these machines, trying our best to live an extra day. I ask where is the world and the human rights organizations? Are they blind? We need help. We need it as soon as possible. It is estimated that Gaza's hospitals are currently suffering from at least a 70% shortage in medicines, largely due to the latest Israeli attack on Gaza last summer and to the ongoing closure of entry points. Nur Telesu TV, Gaza. Thanks to Nord on the latest. Top environmental and public health advocacy groups of the United States are calling on the Obama administration to take action to save honeybees. Bee populations are suffering a catastrophic decline, partly because of the use of new agricultural pesticides. The groups point out that bees are essential to the nation's food supply, and they are calling on the president to take action. Yeah, really, man. Today is no car day in Bogota, the capital of Colombia. Residents of the city are having to walk, ride, ride bikes or take public transport to get around. Although some people are allowed to use horses, the no car day is organized by Bogota City Hall to help reduce air pollution. The city has been having this annual carless day for the last 15 years. Napoleon Bonaparte is the subject of a colourful exhibition of historical satire opening at London's British Museum. The exhibition Bonaparte and the British, Prince and Propaganda in the Age of Napoleon, charts his life from the rise of the young general to the downfall of the emperor who once had Europe at his feet. With his reputation as short and angry, Napoleon was an irresistible subject for caricatures and was vilified like nobody ever had been before. You needed to focus on one sort of evil figure, and the evil figure was to be this, uh, the, the man who was then the first consul. And you ha because you were frightened of him, you had to belittle him, make him seem not so frightening as you really thought he was, and so you, you made him a little tiny person. And that um, is how he's remained in the British consciousness ever since. 
Today is the anniversary of the death of one of Chile's best-known folk singers, Violeta Parra, who died in 1967. Parra was not only a singer who inspired the Nueva Cancion movement, but also a painter, sculptor and embroiderer. Her songs have been covered by artists such as Shakira, Mercedes Sosa, Placido Domingo and Juan Baez. Joan Baez, rather, and her legacy, which brought music back to its popular roots, remained strong throughout Latin America. Celebrating her contribution to music in Latin America, we end with Violeta's most famous song, Gracias a la Vida. More on these and other stories on our website, telesaltv.net slash English. For Telesaw English, I'm Sarah Begum. Good night. Gracias a la vida que me ha dado tanto, me dio dos luceros que cuando los abro perfecto distingo lo negro del blanco y en el alto cielo su fondo estrellado. En las multitudes el hombre que yo amo Gracias a la vida Que me ha dado tanto Me ha dado el oído Que en todo su ancho Graba noche y día Grillos y canales.